Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X13S. This is an ARM-powered laptop, and you've probably seen a video or two from me about this already. Here I've got the Yoga 16, wait, the Yoga 7i16, 16-inch, 2-in-1 device powered by Intel. So it's part of the Yoga line. Then I've got the Z13, which is probably my favorite of the bunch. This is an AMD-powered thin and light ultrabook with a really cool and different design from Lenovo. And then I've got the X1 Carbon Gen 10. So every once in a while throughout the course of a year, something like this happens where I'm individually sent laptops to review. In this case, they happen to all be from Lenovo. And then these review periods sort of overlap. So I'll have something like three weeks or four weeks to test out these devices and get all my content created. But sometimes they overlap and we're in that period right now as you can see so over the next several weeks and perhaps you've already seen a little bit of this already some of my videos like for example the x13s video i'll show the x13x s next to the x1 carbon gen 10 and i'll do some side by sides where for example i take them like this and i show you the io differences the design differences and this is a good time to do that for a couple of reasons Number one, Lenovo are definitely innovating and churning out some new designs, which, you know, they have a history of doing every few years. They have some kind of new design or they have a whole new laptop line like the Yogas were new, I, don't know, I guess, seven, eight years ago was the new thing they introduced with two-in-ones. They kind of pioneered that segment of laptops. And then the second reason is performance is, I think, an important topic at the moment how performance varies from machine to machine. And just with these three machines, the X13S, the Z13, which is my favorite so far, and then the X1 Carbon, you have completely different platforms. The X1 Carbon is a traditional thin and light. Now it's traditional. It used to be cutting edge, you know, 10 generations back, but it runs on the 12th generation Intel P series, which has had some interesting results, not only my own results, but results from others that I've read and watched, where you're getting a lot of heat production, poor battery life, and the common consensus seems to be that Windows 11 and Intel are just not talking to each other, and so Windows is not taking advantage of the efficiency cores that are available in the new 12th gen P-series. That could all be BS, I'm not sure. Then you have the X13S, which is powered by ARMS. This has great battery life, and it offers an always connected 5G or 4G signal if you opt for that. Of course, you have to pay for it every month, but that's totally different from a traditional Intel-based machine. And then here you have the Z13S, or sorry, just Z13. I'm gonna mess this up a lot here in these videos, which I think is the best design Lenovo's produced. It's gorgeous. I mean, it really is a beautiful machine. It's thin and light, it has this cool design. So it's much different. So you have these different platforms and a lot of options, a lot of choices, and then the pricing varies, not only by MSRP, but also the pricing varies by discount, and Lenovo are, you know, they do a lot of discounts. And then these three ThinkPads, you can't just run out and buy them at Best Buy because they're reserved really for the business segment. So if you wanna get your hands on these, you gotta go through something like a CDW, or maybe you'll find one on Amazon through a third-party reseller that you can't really trust, right? So there's, there's some variety there. But then you get the Yoga, which you can walk into Best Buy and purchase this or get it on Amazon or something from directly from Amazon. And this is more of a consumer-grade laptop. So there's, there are a lot of questions that you can be asking about machine-to-machine. -machine. How do they vary? Which one's for me? Which are worth taking a risk on? So for example, the X13S, it's a bit of a gamble. You, If you pick this thing up, you have interest in it. Let's say you have a two week return period on it. You could figure out within two weeks that this is going to work for you. A reason why it may not work for you is that it is ARM based, it's Windows on ARM, and you need to run applications that are supportive. So something like Microsoft Edge or the Brave browser, the entire Microsoft Office suite, they're all optimized and written for ARM. So if you run those, not only is it gonna work just fine and feel like a normal Windows experience, but you'll maintain that solid battery life uh, that it's promised to have. And I got something like 18 hours of video playback at 1080p, 50% brightness, 40% volume, which is below what Lenovo estimated, but still quite good, and that's at 200 nits. So really good battery life, but 
maybe three weeks into it or six months into it for work or for some other purpose that's important, you're, you're in demand of downloading and installing an application that isn't ready for ARM and emulation can't take care of it and then you're SOL. That's certainly possible, but you'd want to know what you're getting into. And that's one of the cool things about having all these machines at once is that something like this, it's not really about, hey, buy the carbon because the X13S, you know, Windows on ARM is not ready for you. It's, it's more like, hey, did you know there's another option out there in addition to the carbon that actually might be better for you because it runs quieter, it's fanless, it's lighter than the X1 carbon, and it has better battery life. But you're kind of restricted to a space that may not feel restrictive, by the way. Just you're, you're going to have to play in a pool that's really just Microsoft Office apps. And there are others, of course. But for my purposes, and I think for purposes of most people who may be considering a carbon, it's not about content creation, photo editing, all that happy crap. It's really about using Microsoft Office apps and traveling, going from state to state through taking trains or airplanes, Ubers, and having having a need to constantly be connected and continue to work. So you got a lot to consider. Now, if you're comparing something like the Z13 to an X1 Carbon, so the X1 Carbon is on Intel, the Z13 is on AMD, they're going to be very similar. It's not the same kind of question about the ARM-based X13S, but I'm glad that I have all of these to compare to one another in these videos because you may be a buyer who wants to be informed about these things. So the, the big performance question, definitely there's a giant difference between the X13S and these two, but even between these two, there are some pretty big differences. I mean, there are, they're big once you start to really split hairs and, and look more closely at your individual use case. So for example, you gotta ask the question, what's up with the IO on the Z13S? So the Z13S has USB Gen 4, two ports, one on the left and one on the right. Doesn't offer HDMI or Thunderbolt, and that's because it's AMD powered. Um, and then on the Carbon, you have native HDMI out, which is fantastic, plus the Thunderbolt. You have two USB-A ports, one on the left and one on the right. So for traditional forms of peripheral connection, like a keyboard or a mouse, you're set. Like you're in really good shape. The X1 Carbon won't let you down if you're, if you're a traditional laptop user. Uh, traditional may even be the wrong word, right? But if you're used, if you're used to a ThinkPad, this is a safe bet right here. But why does this have so much I/O, and then the Z13 has such little I/O? Well, it comes down to that. Well, it's going to be more than this, but at the very minimum, like the, the best place to start this conversation is to talk about who's buying these things and who are they aimed at. The Z13, I think, is a it's a step into a new world for Lenovo and the ThinkPad line. It's not like Lenovo doesn't have other laptops powered by AMD, but with this one in particular, you're going to get better battery life than the Intel ones. And I think that will remain to be true for the, you know, for as long as 12th gen is around. I don't, I just don't think that there's going to be some BIOS patch that comes out, some firmware that's going to dramatically increase the battery life on the 12th gen. I think the 12th gens are sunk, but anyway, AMD, you're going to get better battery life. You're going to get really good performance, but the performance is going to feel very similar because the target buyer for these uh, low wattage CPUs, these Ultrabook machines, are business users, hence ThinkPad. But this is a step into a new world for Lenovo where because it's AMD and it's not the traditional buyer they're targeting, they can experiment. They can try new things that I think will eventually go into the ThinkPad line with or without AMD. It's not because of AMD that Lenovo were able to go with this uh, magnetic haptic type touchpad. It's not because of AMD that Lenovo were able to trim down the bezels dramatically on the Z13 versus something like a Carbon or a traditional ThinkPad. It's, it's not for those reasons. Um, it's because they can produce these in lower volume. It's an R&D exercise. And if they sell them all out, then that's a really good thing. And if not, then you know, they at least got to go through the manufacturing process, the procurement process, supply chain, all that stuff with AMD and other partners that they had to work with to produce this machine. And they got to get a new design language out the door and start to inspire some people uh, to maybe consider something like this for their enterprise. But I think the ThinkPad Z13 is also the first real fusion 
between the traditional ThinkPad and a regular consumer grade laptop. And I'll go into way more detail on this when I publish my full review. But when you look at this machine just kind of on its own, it just, it looks like a ThinkPad. But then when you have something like a Carbon or an X13, you can put them side by side. Again, going back to like the whole beauty behind having to all these machines here at once in the shop, you start to see the differences, the modernization, but you maintain that inspiration from the traditional ThinkPad line. You know, it's still black and red. The traditional colorways of a ThinkPad still has the nub, but some subtle things change. Like instead of function control, it's control function, but they didn't drop function, it's still there, right? So it's control function. Your media keys are the same. You're still getting your brightness control, your airplane mode, your call controls, on the function row keys, just like you would on a traditional ThinkPad. And I think I mentioned the nub, but if I didn't, that's there too. Now, but there are some new things. I mentioned the trackpad being different. You can click anywhere. Mouse one, two, and three are now simulated. They're not physical buttons like you have on the X13. And then the keyboard has also changed too. The keys are larger, the travel distance is smaller, and it's, but it's still a good typing experience. I actually really like typing on this, but it's not for everybody. Um, this also, there are fewer SKUs, whereas on the ThinkPads, well, the X13 doesn't count because this one doesn't have as many SKUs. There's only three different SKUs from what I can tell. But on the Z13, you only have a couple of SKUs on something like a Carbon. There's, I don't know, maybe a dozen different configurations. So you start to see more of the inspiration from the consumer line with the all-metal design and the limited I.O. and the thin and light nature of this device and Lenovo really guiding you towards a whole new way to think about a ThinkPad. So I don't think this is gonna be a big mover. Also this leather finish is really cool and you don't see that on traditional ThinkPads. Although I do believe Carbon Gens 7, 8, and 9 all had leather finishes as an option, but I don't, don't remember seeing that on the 10th gen. So something like this big old 16 inch Yoga, there are some similarities between this and the Z13, right? It's, it's all aluminum, the key travel is shorter, but um, it kind of ends there. <laughs> uh, of course, it's, it's a glass back instead of a matte finish. The Z13 doesn't come with a matte finish. So, oh, quiet down. There we go. So anyhow, I think that one of the really cool things is that we're going to be able to, as you see in my videos the next several weeks, you're going to see these comparisons come up. And that's going to help you, I believe, make some buying decisions. I wish I had another two-in-one in here, but it is kind of the way things are right now. Can't really predict what comes in. I, I try to ask for certain things and I don't always get them, which is fine. But I think having these comparisons is going to be really important. So um, hopefully you find it valuable to have these comparisons. And if you do, and you put that type of information in the comments, it allows me, it gives me a little bit more leverage when I talk to Lenovo and other brands to say, hey, you're gonna send me one that's awesome, send me something else as well so I can do a side-by-side. -side. Like for example, with this Z13, this is the top spec that has the leather finish. I also asked, asked Lenovo to send me the lower end model that has the aluminum back on it so that we can see what they look like side-by-side -side and how they may differ in terms of weight and feel and then fingerprints and all that stuff. Like you may see it right now, but there's some dust on here or something. Maybe it's like protein powder, I don't know. There's some stuff on here and you know, that wouldn't really show up on the aluminum. You just It brushes off kind of on its own or, you, or the wind will move it off like a little breeze. But here, because it gets trapped in the leather, you have to really force it to get it out. And then as you do that, other bits kind of get on there as well. So I think it's helpful to have these comparisons. When I'm looking at buying a laptop, I'm always trying to figure out how I can you know, it, it, what is it like compared to something else and how does performance vary and how am I going to use it? And is this the best one for me? So hopefully you find this all helpful and I'll make sure to get all these comparisons going as discreetly as possible and make sure that's all viable information for you. So I appreciate you watching this one and big thanks to Lenovo for sending these four devices. Unfortunately, they all have to go back, but I'll try to hold on to them as long as I can so that when the next machine comes in, these comparisons can be, be even better. So, all right, appreciate you guys watching. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.